only big players, large organizations uh, have or can pay for a center of excellence uh, in AI. And so, you know, there is this de democratization of data science and machine learning that we didn't have a few years ago. You don't need to have a super fancy model to get reliable predictions. You just need to have high quality data. Tell us a little bit, an overview of what you're trying to accomplish there. It's correlated to what you said so far. I established Amethyx uh, a couple of years ago. It's a very new company here in Belgium. And uh, it's what I consider, a, what I call a consulting boutique. It is uh, focusing or hyper-focused on uh, uh, very narrow domains. So we are hyper-specialized in uh, healthcare and fintech as domains. Uh, even though we had a few uh, missions in the energy sector, but they are all, uh, you know, aggregated and uh, uh, by the same commonalities, which is providing predictions and extracting insight from uh, from the data of our clients. Only big players, large organizations, uh, have or can pay for a center of excellence uh, in AI. And so they have these AI labs, but all the others, you know, I'm talking about uh, medium-sized companies, medium-sized organizations, you know, it's very difficult for them to have a center of excellence. And so most of the time they use external vendors to which they assign their projects for a limited period of time. What we want to do with Amethyx is build a center of excellence on demand for a particular client. And so the workflow of Amethyx goes from a feasibility study, which is two, three weeks in which we understand the requirements of the client and we basically figure out if there is a technical solution. And then we move to the next phase, which is, of course, implementing a proof of concept. And then finally, of course, at the discretion of the client to a production phase where we, in fact, transform this proof of concept in production code or we integrate it within the infrastructure of the client. In addition to this, we also develop uh, products that can be used across domains and across organizations. Now, predicting analytics has been there for quite a bit of time. I would say at least the 20 years that people are doing it. How is it evolving, both from a technology perspective and from a business perspective? I think that the biggest change uh, that we have seen, at least uh, in the last 15 years for sure, is in the availability of data. Today, there are you know, all these apps that we have on our mobile phones and all these internet services that we have today, they didn't exist 15 years ago. And uh, every new service that is uh, created today, it becomes immediately a new source of data for data consumers. The other side is um, uh, improvement in the hardware technology. Uh, today, of course, we have very powerful hardware <laughs> Back in 2003, when I built that Exapod robot, we had something that was way less powerful than a Raspberry Pi. And then there is the cloud. That's another important phenomenon that happened in the last years that allows people like you and me to get access to enormous clusters of computers where we can, in fact, perform computation for a week or a month uh, without any interruption. And so we can train very complex deep neural networks as much as Google can do. And so, you know, there is this de democratization of data science and machine learning that we didn't have a few years ago. What can be predicted better today that was not possible before with uh, hierarchical clustering or things like this? Well, the idea of having uh, machine learning models that are more accurate, of course, makes things more reliable. And, uh, and also, it gives more peace of mind to the managers who are going to make a decision of using or not a machine learning uh, approach. On the other side, we have also seen a lot of data augmentation, that is uh, enrichment of the data that one has, you know, sitting under the desk of whatever business process one is handling. And uh, there is a lot more data connection. And as I said before, you don't need to have a super fancy model to get reliable predictions. You just need to have high quality data. Once we find a way to train machine learning models with high quality data, we win.